Alrighty guys, today is transmission day and we're going to figure out what went wrong inside the 4L80, that guy right there that was attached to the turbocharged 8.1 under the hood of ugly truck, the 2000 Silverado. Now, um, I think I showed you this transmission about a week and a half ago when we removed it from the truck and my plan was originally to install a Circle D 3400 RPM stall converter and a Transgo HD2 shift kit. Uh, the thought at the time was just, number one, make that turbo spool up a little bit quicker with the looser converter, and number two, improve the holding power of the transmission ever so slightly with said shift kit. But when I was just about ready to put things back together, I noticed a few of those little Torrington roller bearings that were just sitting out in the bottom of the pan, and I realized that something was not majorly wrong, but there was something coming apart inside the transmission, probably just a thrust bearing, but it was to the point where I just decided I can't put this back together knowing that there's some stuff not right inside the transmission. So I thought about what to do. I could have just went out and ordered a complete replacement transmission from one of the you know high-end builders, something that'll hold my ultimate power goal with my 547 because um, my goal originally was a thousand horsepower, but I think that's quickly gonna get escalated by a couple hundred horsepower once we start rocking and rolling on this motor. But anyway, um, all that's to say is this transmission that I'm doing right now is not going to be the final one that's in the truck. I probably still will stick with the 4L80, but I might end up having one professionally built for the big motor because I still need to upgrade some things like, you know, the input shaft and a few odds and ends. But for now, this one should survive a little bit longer behind the stock turbo big block for now. So. Um, here's kind of the route that we're going to take today. We need to get this thing torn down, number one, to find out exactly what failed on the inside. I'm pretty sure it's just a couple bearings, but since we're going to be in there, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to kind of refresh it a little bit and just get a little practice on automatic transmissions because that's, I feel like, the one area where I have the least amount of experience. So I figured I've got a couple hundred bucks in parts, not counting the converter, but uh, this is a great opportunity to learn how an automatic transmission comes apart and goes back together and it'll help me kind of just figure out the inner working. So here's what we're going to be installing probably in the next video because I think this video will mostly be about teardown and discovery but here's just a quick overview of the parts that we're going to be using. So I bought, I started out with just your basic rebuild kit and this guy comes with you know your basic uh, bushing kit. It has all the clutches and uh, the frictions and steels has a gasket kit, filters, it has a bunch of seals in there, a uh, few odds and ends, but that did not come with things like the Sprag, so I got all three Sprags for the 4L80. It did not come with um, the roller bearings, which is the main reason why we're tearing it down, so I ordered a complete set of roller bearings. Also grab, just in case, a new pump gear, and there's a, I think the low reverse band in that box there. Uh, a spring compressor tool, a pump alignment tool, two different types of transmission assembly lubricant. Um, I think that's actually kind of it, the stuff that we're gonna be putting in there. Uh, also not pictured here is just a little, uh, I'm gonna do the internal dual feed mod, so I had to pick up one of those little 3 8 plugs. I think that should be here a little bit later today. I am going to redo the shift kit a little bit. I'm going to take out the Transgo three-layer valve body uh, separator plate and put the original one back in. I'll just drill for the larger holes for the shifting. Um, that's kind of the overview of what we're going to do. Like I said, it's not the final transmission build, but it should at least, I mean, it'll definitely hold up better than the old worn out stock one. And with those, you know, hydraulic upgrades, especially in third gear, I feel like it'll definitely hold up for the rest of the season. That's really all I'm going for is just to get the truck back together because there are a few events this year that I still want to try out and I really, really want to feel it with the loose converter in there because I feel like it's going to make it a completely different truck. But anyway, all that'll happen shortly. So let's get started on the teardown. So first thing is to get the pan off. I had just temporarily reinstalled this after teardown just so I could move the transmission around. We will get the internal wiring harness out of the way and then it's up to the main guts of the transmission which we need to first remove the pump and there's a little spot where you can kind of get a pry bar in there to pop the pump up and get it out of the way. Then there's this first main shaft assembly and this is where we found our problem. I think that right there is the problem. That used to be a roller bearing and now it's not. 
The fourth gear clutch assembly is held into the case with a single bolt that is down below and the shift kit actually gives you a new one of these. So we'll pull that out and lift the fourth gear clutch right out of the transmission. Next we have the forward clutch assembly, I believe, and that is followed by the direct clutch. There's a one-way sprag on the back here. Got to pull the intermediate band out of the way. Then there's a snap ring and a clutch pack that sits on top of the center support. Just kind of looking at the frictions to see what condition they're in. And overall, considering what this transmission went through, they're not in bad shape. I'll pull the servo off on the inside. That'll just kind of relieve pressure on the lower band. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Of course, there's a little fluid in there and it's kind of nasty. There's the bolt that holds the center support in the case. And this one is really, really tight. Additionally, the center support is held in by the rear cooler return fitting. So we got to get that out of the way. Then the center support just lifts out of the case. There's one more snap ring. I actually didn't have to take this one out now. That's just what the center support sits on. I'll remove the rear tail housing just so I can have access to clean everything up. And then finally, grab the whole main shaft assembly and the rest of the guts pull out of the transmission. So today's Monday morning for me and just two days ago on Saturday I found out about a really cool event that's happening at a local airport one week from then so on this next coming Saturday only like six days from right now. Uh, anyway there's a cool eighth mile uh, cash day sort of thing but they're also doing a half mile airstrip attack where you just get out on the runway and let her eat for a whole half mile and I was really really looking forward to it. I found out about the event at the last minute and I'm still going to try to make it, but I found some collateral damage on the inside that I didn't buy the parts for because I had no idea because I hadn't torn it apart yet. And that might set me back a little bit more on my goal to make that event. But anyway, uh, let me kind of show you where we're at. First of all, we have the case completely torn down. Um, this is still dirty. I'll have to power wash this or just attack it with brake clean or whatever. Uh, but we'll get the case cleaned up and then we can move on to kind of doing some reassembly and rebuild work on this. But the damage, let's, let me show you that real quick because that's the whole reason we're here, right? Um, this is the thrust bearing and I kind of suspected this is exactly what failed. Not this one in particular, but just a thrust bearing. And there's supposed to be a little retainer ring, which is what this is, and a bunch of little rollers and it's all captured together. And this is what isolates the overdrive planet from the forward clutch assembly. Needless to say, that disintegrated. All the little rollers dropped out and fell in between the gears and caused a whole bunch of damage. Uh, first of all, on the forward clutch hub, the, I think that's what it's called, there's a bunch of grooves right here, like something's been spinning around a whole bunch. So this, I believe, is really, really damaged. But oddly enough, this is the bearing race that sat in there, just kind of like that. And if this were spinning around, this, uh, the backside of the race would be kind of like smashed and destroyed but my thought is perhaps this bearing failed in the past they rebuilt the unit but they didn't actually replace this because those grooves in there they're just they're quite deep and it definitely does not appear to be like it should do that anyway um, the next thing to look at is the surface of the gears on the overdrive planet i'll just give this a quick spin around and you can see that just about every single gear has some pretty significant damage on it. There's big chunks missing, and that's because when the roller bearing failed, basically the rollers just fell right in between the gears and they just, they got smashed up. So the gears are destroyed, we need a new overdrive planet. Probably I'm gonna get a new forward clutch hub. And the weird thing though is, those planetary gears ride on this, and this ring gear right here is, seems like it's pretty much perfect, but because it's attached to this hub, this will probably all get replaced um, as long as that. The uh, overrun clutch housing or whatever this outer surface is called, where the teeth of the clutch engage, that's kind of worn. I think this is okay. Uh, same thing with the piston here. It might be hard to see, but the surface, if this will focus right down there, you can kind of see it's chewed up. Again, I think that'll be okay, but this is the direct damage here and here caused by the failure of the roller bearing. So 
where do we stand now with our rebuilds? What I'm gonna do basically is I'll just, once this case is cleaned up, I'm gonna start at the back and just work my way forward. I'll take each assembly one at a time, disassemble it, clean it up, put all new seals, bushings, whatever needs to go inside, and then put it into the case one at a time until we come to a point where we need some more parts. I do need to hop online and actually probably what I'll do just to prevent doing like multiple orders, I'll probably get most of the stuff taken apart just so I know if there's anything else, any other surprises that I'll need to order. But I think for the most part, we have found all the damage. So in hindsight, watching myself clean this up as I'm recording these voiceovers, I kind of wish I would have taken the empty case to like a car wash or something so I could have cleaned the outside of it. But in reality, the inside is what you want to be really, really clean. And the outside, well, that'll just make it look better. I'm driving out the rearmost bushing of the case so I can replace that later on. And then it's just a little bit more work with the brake clean. And remember, I'm trying to get the inside as clean as possible. So once the cleanup work is done, I'll drive in a new rear bushing and just kind of pay attention to the orientation that these need to go in because it does matter because a lot of these actually have lubrication that pass through them. There's one rear seal that's kind of internal to the transmission and that gets held in place with a snap ring. Over on the bench, I'm tearing down the rearmost rotating assembly. I couldn't tell you what this one is called, but there's a snap ring that holds the output shaft into the rear drum. There's a couple of bearings in there. I think there's one thrust bushing and one thrust bearing. Pull the intermediate shaft out, and then I'm working on the bushing. These are kind of a pain in the butt to get out. I don't have a proper bushing puller, but just kind of work at them, you get them out of there, and then clean everything up in the parts washer. I showed you guys my parts washer a while ago when I first got it, and I initially tried diesel fuel in it, but since then I've actually upgraded to the Tractor Supply parts solvent. I've got 10 gallons in there, and so far this stuff is working great. We'll drive the new bushing into the tail housing, and I'll use my tool here with the correct size spacer in there just so it kind of holds everything in place and nothing gets flared out. Something else you'll need if you're working on transmissions is a proper assembly lube, something that'll actually allow the bearings to get lubrication on the initial startup. But it also, it's really helpful because it kind of acts as a glue. It'll hold these bearings and things in place. So whenever you have these components like upside down, they won't just fall out. They'll actually be stuck there to allow you to easily assemble the transmission and there's no worry of a bearing falling out of place. So I use this stuff liberally and on just about everything. Now some builders will tear down a transmission start to finish and get every single part disassembled, clean everything up at once, and then put it all back together. Now that might be a little bit more efficient way to go about doing things, but because I don't remember exactly what order every single component goes in, I find it's a lot simpler just to kind of rebuild one little section at a time, and it helps me stay a little bit more organized and keep things in the right direction. Although. Yes, it does kind of drag the project out a little bit longer, but if you're new at this, just take your time and pay attention to the order that these parts go in because yes, it does matter. So here you can see I'm lubing up the sun gear, and this one I actually, I'm pretty sure I had it in backwards because there is an up and a down, and when I double checked it later, I couldn't remember which direction I put it in, but like I said, pretty sure I had it backwards. So pay attention, because this counter shaft actually sits on one side of that sun gear. So back at the case, we'll drop the first band down in the bottom there, and there's two little studs it has to line up on. And then we'll just kind of slide the first two drums down in the case, and we will go over to the press. Here, here I'm removing the longest bushing that's in the center support, and I am using the press just because it's kind of really long and I don't want to mess anything up. I'm cleaning up the piston in the return spring, everything that goes inside the center support, just so it's you know nice and clean and ready to go back together. And then here I'm installing the lip seal on the piston. 
Now, the rest of the clutches in the case use a bonded piston where the center support actually uses a just regular lip seal. And these can be a bit of a pain in the butt to put in, but this little plastic disc, it just kind of helps walk the lip seal into place and hopefully you don't tear anything. The return spring goes back on and that's what just pushes the piston back down in the bottom of the bore once the clutch is done being applied. And I probably mentioned this tool before, I picked it up on Amazon, I can't remember how much, I think it's like $30, but it actually works pretty good to compress these springs just so you can get the snap rings back on. Now finally, this long center bushing that goes in the center support, it is very critical that you have it lined up properly because lubrication does pass through it in a couple of places. All right, it's the next day and we are cranking right along on this 4L80 rebuild. We've got everything below the center support stuffed back into the case. And all that stuff down there is actually fairly straightforward. There's no clutches or anything like that. Uh, it's just all basically gears, planetaries, and there's a band in there. But everything from here below is just kind of like clean it up, put new bushings and bearings in, uh, put a little bit of lube on all the gears and the bearing surfaces and put it back together. I do have the center support completely prepped, and this is actually the first clutch piston that you'll encounter in the transmission. So everything from the uh, center support up is all a little bit more time consuming. Now there's one extra mod that I'm doing while I'm in here, and this is dual feeding the uh, direct drum. And basically what that does, and the reason for doing that, is it doubles the hydraulic surface area when third gear is engaged or the direct drum is engaged, basically giving the transmission in third gear a whole lot more holding power. Now the Transgo shift kit that we installed last time we were inside this thing has a three layer separator plate that accomplishes the same thing as what we're doing here, but it routes the fluid in just a little bit different path. But the problem, or so I've read, about the Transgo three layer separator plate is that it can cross leak over time because you've got three little thin layers of metal directing hydraulic fluid in between them. Um, supposedly, like I said, they can leak over time. So we're doing an internal dual feed mod and basically that starts on the sensor support right here and you leave off this second sealing ring right there. Oh, come on, focus. Uh, leave off this sealing ring so when fluid comes out, I'm not sure which hole it comes out. There's two holes here and there's another hole uh, down here. But either way, when one of these is, is engaged, the fluid can then fill both of these cavities into the back of the direct drum, which is this guy right here. Um, the fluid goes through, oh, sorry, I'm wrong with this one. The fluid goes in, let's see, there's a hole there's a hole there and there's another hole or several holes actually but basically you're putting fluid through two of those holes which increases the surface area on the piston which is below this return spring here um, so anyway more holding power from this clutch which is active in third gear um, you do it's recommended you drill a small hole on the outside of this drum just to prevent centrifugal apply which is when that's spinning around all the fluid goes to the outside and it makes it so the piston can't retract and your clutches will drag just a little bit now this is all information that i'm repeating stuff that i've read and learned i'm not a hydraulics engineer and i'll be honest i don't necessarily understand all the little fluid paths that um are routed inside of 4l80 but i've done a ton of reading and i feel like i have a pretty good understanding on it just so I guess my disclaimer here is don't go and do what I am telling you to do if you're building a 4L80. Um, do your own research and figure out what you want to do. But for my case, what I'm doing, this is how I'm dual feeding the direct drum to increase the holding power in third gear, which this transmission is going to need all the help it can get with that big old torquey big block sitting out in front. Um, let's see, a couple other things I wanted to share with you guys. I picked this up from Amazon and this has come in handy. This is like a 60 something piece uh, bearing driver kit and it comes with all these little uh, miscellaneous sized spacers. And basically what it lets you do is stack two of them together like this and they're sized in millimeters, I believe. And that will allow you to, for example, center the driver in a bushing like this so you can easily push it in without flaring out the ends of these bushings because they are fairly thin and you want these to be pushed in without distorting them i did drive a few in with a hammer but this long one you saw me use the press on it just because it'll it'll be uh, much more even force 
and that's less likely to distort it. Anyway, I'll put the link in the description for this Amazon. It was actually only $60 and this is a great tool to have. Um, let's see what else. There was two tools I used to help install the lip seals. This guy, I bought a pack of five of these for like 30 bucks, which is way overpriced considering it's just like a thin piece of plastic, but it's a pretty good concept. It just kind of helps you roll the lip seal into place. And then I also used, this is just a traditional lip seal tool. It's got a thin piece of wire on that side and a little thicker piece of wire there. It just kind of helps you spin it around and tuck the lip seal into the bore. Um, I don't actually have an air compressor. I don't have a way to air check these before I put them in, but just if you're working with lip seals on the transmission, just take your time because if you tear one and if you don't have a good way to check it, well, you're going to find out when you try to drive the truck and a certain clutch doesn't apply when it should. So anyway, uh, I've just, I've taken my time and I'm pretty confident that it's not torn. Although this one, I will say, I think this is the fourth clutch here. This really funky piston. People say that one is a complete bear and you're not supposed to tackle it if you're an amateur transmission builder, which I am an amateur transmission builder and I think I'm going to tackle it. So I might kick myself in the butt later on, but why not? We got the parts, we might as well refresh it and make everything nice and brand new. Uh, speaking of brand new, I was actually able to find the two damaged pieces at the local Transtar. Um, this is the Overdrive Planetary and the uh, Direct Clutch Hub. No, um, I don't know. I don't remember which, which one this is, but um, I've drawn a blank. Anyway, um, yeah, this one is new. That surface right there is nice and flat compared to this one here, which is like all scarred up. Um, new planet. This is actually used planetary, but all the gears are in really good shape. I will take this apart because there is a roller bearing that sits down inside there and you have to kind of pop that clip off, pull the little axles out for each of the planetary gears, and then you can swap that bearing out. But anyway, I'll show you that. Uh, we got a bunch of clutches to rebuild through here. And that's just basic transmission building 101. So let's continue on. I've got some new seals on the servo piston, so I'll get that slid back into the case just because I figure it'll kind of help support the band exactly where it needs to go. A couple of bolts on there and we'll tighten her up. So the center support now gets dropped down into the case. And this one is a little bit tricky because you've got to line up the sprag with the drum that's below it. So it does take a little bit of wiggling back and forth. And it took me a few attempts. And I realized that if you put the sprag on the center support first, it'll go in a little bit easier. That's how it's done. The center support bolt goes on the back, kind of where the valve body sits. And now I'm driving in a 3 8 inch cap plug, and this is part of the dual feed mod. Basically, there's a port right beside the center support bolt that you need to block off so fluid can't back feed through it. Now I'm stacking the clutches that go right on top of the center support. There's a handful of them in there. Just kind of alternate friction and steel, friction and steel, and a snap ring and a thicker plate kind of hold the whole thing together. Also, this snap ring right here is a thicker one that came with the Transgo shift kit. Uh, the stock one that's here is kind of thin and flimsy, so just the thicker one apparently helps hold it in place. So this is the direct clutch, and this is the second part of that dual feed modification that we talked about. The first step is clearly get everything stripped down because we need to, number one, replace the piston, and number two, we need to modify the back of the drum by drilling a tiny hole in it. Of course, you got to clean everything up first. Now, the smallest drill bit that I had was 1 16th of an inch, and the spec that I've read calls for 60 thousandths, which is just a teeny tiny bit smaller than 1 16th, but close enough. I've got a new bonded piston all lubricated and cleaned up. And once again, we're working with this little lip wizard tool. I bought these on eBay, like I said, 30 bucks for five of them. Uh, I feel like that's a ripoff, but at least it helps get the job done. And in probably 15 minutes, I got this first piston pushed into place. We've got some old return springs that we had on the direct clutch assembly. And these also get replaced with stiffer springs from the Transgo shift kit. 
I have seen people try to use like two C-clamps when you're working on these return springs, and that definitely could probably get the job done, but I think a proper clutch compressor tool, especially if it's only like 30 bucks, is gonna save you a lot of headache. Once again, we're just stacking up clutches. I believe this kit that I bought has uh, Alto Red clutches. They're supposed to be a little bit grippier than stock and Choline steels. No idea what that all is, but it's just a good grippy material. And once again, just alternate friction steel, friction and steel. All right, so now we're doing the 32 element sprag that goes in the forward drum, I believe. Now this is a directional clutch and if you get it wrong, which you can on this one, then your transmission is not gonna be happy. So I got it put together and then here I am looking at the old sprag and I realize, all right, this can go in upside down, which means the rotation can be backwards. So thankfully we got YouTube to the rescue. I looked it up and found a video and got my answer. That could be important to get right. Here's the sprag that's not been taken apart on an intermediate drum of a 4L80E. Three wheels and locks counterclockwise. Watch this one. This one, three wheels counterclockwise. And locks clockwise. You'll notice the band that was trying to hold this guy got cooked as well. Luckily, it's a simple fix. All I've got to do is pop the outer race off and flip the whole thing upside down and put it right back on. And now the race is in the right direction and the sprag locks in a counterclockwise direction, which is exactly what it should do. So we've got ourselves a new band going in the middle of the case. There's a single stud on the left hand side that holds it in and the servo is on the valve body side. We have the direct clutch, I believe, gets dropped into the case. A little bit of wiggling back and forth to kind of help it line up. Got one more piston to slide in. And then here's how I'm soaking all the clutches. I just got a one gallon jug of ATF from O'Reilly's. It's kind of half used. So I just cut the side off the jug, lay it down on its side, and it's just a good easy way to soak all your clutches. And it fits just about everything on the 4L80 in there so it gets soaked. And I leave them in there, like I said, maybe five minutes, just enough to get a little bit of ATF on the clutches. So back at the case, anytime you're dropping a clutch assembly together, I like to just wiggle it back and forth a couple of times. Don't force it in because it will drop when it's ready, uh, but just kind of pick it up a few times and if you can hear it drop and make that like metallic -y clunk. Well, that's how you know it's in. If you hear a dull thud, usually that means it's still stuck on another clutch. So we've made pretty good progress. I do have a pretty big decision to make though about whether or not to reuse one part. I think I've actually made that decision, but I'm really not proud of the decision. Let me get to that in just a second. First, a quick update on where we're at with this whole transmission build. We have everything from the direct clutch, I believe is what it's called, down, completely assembled, triple checked. Uh, this is the surface right here that got chewed up, by the way. That's where the thrust bearing sat that completely failed. So this is a new drum, new bushing, and everything from there down, triple checked literally three times because I just kept second guessing myself. It was actually the third day of the build also, but I would just kind of read diagrams at night after I got done working and I'd be like, man, did I forget something? Did I have that upside down? Um, there was two things that I had second guessed. Number one was the intermediate snap ring, I think. The one that holds the center support in, I believe there's a bevel on it and I'm pretty sure I had it upside down. I think you're supposed to have the bevel up. And the, so I think I had that one right, but the one I had wrong was the sun gear in the bottom planetary. I did have that one upside down. And the reason why that's important is because there's a small chamfer on one end of it. And the chamfer is supposed to go down because on the top side of the gear, the uh, counter shaft actually sits on it. And that's what holds, it goes through the center support and it holds the direct clutch. And if you have that chamfer on the sun gear upside down, it allows the counter shaft to sit just a little bit lower than it should. And that will throw off your clearances for the whole rest of the unit. So anyway, tore it apart, uh, correct that. The sun gear you do want to watch out for because it is, other than that chamfer, it is symmetrical and it will go in 
either way. And there's also a lube hole on there that you want to just make sure lines up with the hole in the counter shaft. So anyway, uh, everything is triple checked and I'm like 99.999% sure that everything is perfect that's inside the case right now. So here's the decision that we have to make and here's why I'm torn. On the fourth gear piston and clutch assembly, there are two lip seals inside this guy. Uh, here they are right here. Um, these are pretty simple seals, but if you've been watching me put these pistons in, uh, you know that the piston installation is kind of a pain in the butt. But it is majorly a pain in the butt when it comes to this fourth gear one because there's two lip seals, one on each half. There's one on the piston, one on the drum and they're like way inside there. It's very difficult to access. They do have a special tool for this, but the special tool is like 350 bucks or something like that, and there's a few versions of it. But the short version is either you buy the special tool or you try to install the lip seals without it, and there's a pretty good likelihood that you're going to damage said lip seals in this process. Now, I do not have an air compressor. I don't have a way to air check these clutches. So I've just been very meticulous and patient trying to get these you know, clutch pistons in. And so far, I think I've been pretty successful. But this one, like I said, there's a pretty good chance that I would do some damage on it. And if I did, the only way to discover it for me would be getting the transmission back in the truck, going for a drive and finding out, oh, shoot, we have no fourth gear. And then we would have to take the transmission back out of the truck, put it back on the bench, tear it apart, and then once again, try to do a replacement on the lip seals in the fourth gear clutch. Now there is one option, which I haven't looked into a lot yet, but I think there's a chance I might be able to buy this assembly pre-assembled. And the reason why I kind of thought about that is because you can see there's a little bit of damage on this part of the piston right here. This is where the uh, bottom steel sits for the clutch assembly. There's a few small grooves in these little uh, tangs right here. And then on the end, you can see right here, this is where the steel's right in the clutch basket. They just kind of rattle back and forth and this is aluminum, so it kind of wears into there a little bit. So uh, I think this will be okay and I think I'm actually just going to use it. And even though I am kind of embarrassed to admit it because my OCD is like, replace everything. We want everything to be brand new. And that's kind of what we've done so far. But there's also those risks of, you know, going through the effort to do it. And then we'll be in a worse spot than we are now because we'll put in a damage or we'll inadvertently damage the seal as we install it. Now, I've probably said this in this video already, but this transmission shifted perfectly when we were driving it before. I mean, Every single gear, no matter how much throttle I was putting down, it always shifted right on time. It was crisp. It was right there. Uh, the only issue with this transmission is I needed a different torque converter. That's why we tore it apart and tore it down. So the short version is, I believe this drum is just fine as it is. In fact, all the, these are the old seals right here that I pulled out of the transmission. Everything is still pretty pliable, still pretty soft. So I'm thinking there's, that's going to be the same case in the fourth gear assembly right there. So uh, needless to say, I'm, <laughs> I hate to admit this, but I'm pretty much just going to send it. I got new clutches and steels I'll put in here. Um, and then I think that's the safest bet, even though I hate to admit it. And even I hate to tell you guys about it, but what do we have left to do? Well, and this will all be in the next video, but I've got to switch out the front planetary because this one, remember, got chewed up when the bearing failed. Once again, there's the failed bearing. A um, bunch of teeth myth missing on that planetary. Got a new planetary here. So I'll pull this apart. I'll replace the roller bearing in there. Uh, there's one more clutch pack in here that I'll replace. We'll go through the pump. I've got a new pump gear in there, new bushings. Clean everything up like we've been doing. And then I still have a few more things to do inside the valve body. Um, switch the separator plate back out for the stock one. Um, and then we put everything back together. So we're like 80% of the way done with this job. It definitely took a little bit longer than I would have originally thought, but that's part of it. And I would much rather take my time and make sure everything is working the way that it should and everything is in the right order rather than rushing through it, slamming the transmission back in the truck and then having to take it apart like three more times because I rushed something and forgot a step. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. I know this was a long video. Uh, let me know what you think about the voiceovers. I think that lets me get a little bit more technical information in there. I think you guys like it, but just let me know. Um, drop a comment, click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in a couple of days.